Hi there, my name is Roger Pillemer and I am an orthopaedic surgeon with a particular interest in impairment assessment. In the fourth presentation of my main YouTube series, I discussed how to differentiate between a high and a low median nerve lesion and suggested three clinical signs that would help you to do this. What I would like to do in this presentation is to show you a case I saw recently who demonstrates these signs. For more details on this subject and a discussion of the anatomy, I would refer you back to the main presentation. In summary then, and firstly with regard to sensory loss, it was pointed out that the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve comes off above the palmar carpal ligament and is therefore not involved in a case of median nerve compression within the carpal tunnel. So, a high median nerve lesion will have sensory loss in the area shown in the slide, whereas sensation in this area is preserved in a carpal tunnel lesion. With regard to motor testing, it was pointed out that the median nerve supplies flexor pollicis longus to the thumb, which will be weakened in a high but not in a low lesion. And recall that in a normal hand it is very difficult to overcome flexion at the interphalangeal joint of the thumb without feeling that one may snap the tendon. I try it out on someone. So the second test is testing the power of flexor pollicis longus. Also recall that the site of compression of the median nerve in the upper mid forearm is where the median nerve passes under the fibrous arch of flexor digitorum superficialis and percussion in this region may elicit a positive Tunnell sign. So the three clinical signs to look for in a high median nerve lesion are firstly sensory loss in the palm of the hand with sparing in a carpal tunnel lesion, secondly diminished power of resistance to flexion of the IP joint of the thumb and thirdly a positive Tunnell sign in the upper mid forearm. This video is of a lady I saw this month, October 2016, age 60, who had worked as a picker and packer for the same company for some 18 years on a full-time basis. She originally developed paresthesia in the thumb, index and middle fingers of her left hand in 2003, with similar symptoms in her right hand in 2006. She developed discomfort in the basal joint of both thumbs. Nerve conduction studies showed minimal carpal tunnel syndrome bilaterally. Because of persistent and severe symptoms, she came to a left carpal tunnel release in 2006 and a right carpal tunnel release in 2009. Symptoms persisted and she came to a repeat left carpal tunnel release in March 2014 and a repeat right carpal tunnel release in May 2014, once again with no improvement in her symptoms. When I saw her in October this year, she had typical symptoms of median nerve involvement waking every night and usually twice a night with pins and needles and numbness in her hands and having to open and close the fingers and rub her hands together and shake her hands uh, to get the symptoms to settle. Her hands were stiff and felt swollen in the mornings and for the previous four to five years symptoms had radiated up both arms to her shoulders and her neck. On direct questioning she regularly dropped things during the day. Once again I will let the video speak for itself. Prick is when you feel, no prick when you don't feel. This one? Prick. Yeah? Prick. This one? No prick. Yeah? No. Yeah? No. This one here? Just a bit. Just a bit. Tell me when it goes from prick to no prick. Prick? Prick. No. No prick. Mm. Let's do this hand. This one? Prick. Yeah? No prick. This one? No. Yeah? No. This side? Just a bit. Tell me when it goes from prick to no prick. Prick, no prick. No prick, okay. Give me this hand, Nadia. Tell me when you feel the pins and needles going into the hand. Start and off. There? Yeah. Where does the pins and needles go? All into the fingers. Yeah. Tell me again. Now start. Now start. Yeah. Give me this one. Tell me again. Now start. Going where? Yeah, like into the fingers. Yeah. Okay, I want you to bend your thumb down, hold it down, hold it down, hold it down. Okay, give me this hand, Nadia. Hold it down, hold it down, hold it down. Okay, fine, lovey, thank you. As stressed in the original talk, it behoves us as clinicians to be aware of the possibility of a rare case of high median nerve lesion 
particularly in cases who have failed to respond to a carpal tunnel release. I would suggest that it would be well worth carrying out these three tests in every case of suspected median nerve involvement. As mentioned, for a more detailed discussion of this subject, as well as other clinical signs and items of interest in my YouTube series, click on the link below. Stay well. Mm -hmm.